R&B diva, Shaka Khan. She's up next. And we are reading about her in David Nathan's The Soulful Divas. That's right. We're going to talk about R&B diva Shaka Khan and what David Nathan had to say about Shaka Khan in his book, The Soulful Divas. It's up next. Let's talk. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back over here to Peppy's Point of View, and I am your host, your R&B historian, Peppy. Let's just jump, jump right into it, and let's just talk about R&B diva Shaka Khan. If you watched my last video, then you already know how I was just totally taken aback by uh, listening to Shaka Khan's solo album, her uh, debut solo album, Shaka. I mean, this lady is a beast. She really is. There's no one like Shaka Khan vocally on the planet. I know I'm guilty of, of Whitney Houston. Like, I just thought Whitney Houston, and she is. Whitney Houston has a vocal style unlike any other. You, you, you understand where I'm coming from. But... I don't know. Okay. I put, ooh, thank you. This is how I say it. Whitney Houston's live performances, perform, performances, perf, ah, performances. I don't know why I can't talk. I was eating something just a few minutes ago. She can evoke something out of you with her live uh, performances. I never been moved. I want you to understand something. It's, I've never been moved by any of Whitney Houston's recordings. Like, I just like, oh, wow, this is a good song. It's a good record. I love it, so on and so forth. But it's something about Whitney Live that is, like, magical out of this world. Shaka Khan, on the other hand, listening to her album, like this Shaka album, I'm like, whoa, like, and I'm talking vocally, you know, I'm like, what is she doing? And so I wanted to come back and I wanted to talk about the album, actually. I did. And I'm going to talk about the album Shaka. But I remember when I had this book and I have yet to read uh, The Soul for Divas. I have yet to read all of it. However, I remember I was like, wait a minute, I think. Shaka, David has a, a section in his book, you know, uh, discussing Shaka Khan. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get back to reading this book, you know, to see, you know, to get my Shaka on, you know. So anywho, long story short, short story long. So been out, you know what I'm saying, did some self-care today, you know. And so I came back in and I'm saying to myself, like, okay, I think I want to, you know, read the book and, you know, maybe upload a video later on. When I tell you, I just started to read the book, So for Divas, okay? And by the way, this is not a paper promotion or anything like this. This is a, you know, a book I want to read. Go out and get it for yourself. I mean, honestly, I don't even know David Nathan. I don't. I just know the book, and I'm a fan of David's work because, you know, back in the day, you know, when you're, you know, purchasing your music, like, say, for instance, like this album right here, it just was at the top. It was just at the top, you know, <laughs> of my collection. You know, I'm always going to talk about my Angela Wimbush over here. But anyway, so as you can see, back in the day when you would start uh, buying these Greatest Hits albums, they will always have someone writing, um, you know, like doing their, I guess you say, commentary or whatever 
uh, within the compilations. And so David Nathan's name would pop up in a lot of them. And so I saw his name down a lot. And that's how I became a fan of his work. And then, you know, to see Blues and Soul magazine. Okay, you guys understand why I'm going. But anywho, so here's the thing. I started to read the first page. Now, I am not exaggerating. I started to read the first page and I was like, there's no way. I, I had to stop and I had to come over here and I had to record. The reason why, because everything that I was thinking about Shaka, this first page captures her like, like he, he was, I don't think he was being shady at all towards Shaka Khan with the things he was saying. I got to tell you, just listen, listen to what he's saying, okay? So for divas, okay? Oh my gosh. Hmm. Woo! I mean, it's really that deep, y'all. I'm telling you. Most people hear the name Shaka Khan and they think hair, lips, and is she high? <laughs> well, the hair is still out there and the lips are all and the lips will always be there. But anyone who has been following Shaka's uh, Shaka Khan's illustrious career would know that the DRUG reference. <laughs> is a remnant of the time when she went to H-E-L-L -L and back in a limousine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shaka first used that line when she and I did one of the many interviews we've conducted since 1974. When she, excuse me, y'all, when she was the 21-year-old lead single with the legendary band Rufus, okay? Now listen to what David had to say. The DRUG thing can get many, excuse me, can get mighty tired. And while I can think of two occasions, the one during a live performance in 1976, the other when I was doing an interview with Rufus in 1979, when Shaka was under the influence of something, and the rest of the time she has been more than just lucid. She has been forthcoming, painfully honest, street smart, a techno SHIT woman who knows far more than she lets on. Hold on. Hold that thought. Who lets on more than she, uh, who knows more than she lets on. Hold that right there. Okay. I'm going to go somewhere with that one. All right. Shaka can also be very funny. I was getting ready to walk into a conference room at Warner Brothers her recording home for almost 18 years. And the publicist who had arranged our uptint uh, interview for Blues and Soul began to introduce me. I know Mr. Thing, Shaka Boom, grinning from ear to ear. I then turned every shade of crimson while Shaka just smiled. Sit down, honey, she begged. And like old pals, we talked about Life, love, and the pursuit of hit records. Shaka has been a fixture of the music scene for close to 30 years, has influenced a whole generation of singers, everyone from Mary J. Blige to Mickey Howard, from Faith Evans to Saint, uh, Sandra St. Victor, from Erica Badu to Vesta, and has amassed a wealth of hits both with Rufus from 1973 to 1983 or thereabouts, and as a solo artist, get this. Nevertheless, this is where we're going. Nevertheless, Shaka is seldom lumped together with other sofa divas like Aretha Patty and Gladys. This might well be a generational thing. It's easy to forget that in 1998, Shaka turned 45, younger than all of the other women covered in this book with the exception of Anita Baker, who is just four years her junior, and the young divas Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, and Toni Braxton. That said, Shaka's contribution to music has been no less valid. And if anything, she has never been fully accorded the kind of respect and props she deserves for what she has done. I was guilty of not fully comprehending Shaka's impact on music for many years myself. Sure, I love many of her records with Rufus. And while I could never sing it out in a entire solo album that I considered musically even, 
We'll talk about that. I found more than a few shocker slow jams in groove tunes to make me happy. Sure. But when people talked about the divas who had been most influential, I would immediately mention Aretha without considering how Shaka's powerhouse vocal style might have affected a truckload of female vocalists born in the late 1960s and early 1970s. You know... David is right. I have to definitely give him credit for this. David, you know, we can chop this up many ways. I can go back to my video that I just uploaded um, with Shaka. But Shaka definitely has influenced her sound to me, definitely influenced the divas of the 80s. You can hear Shaka all up in that. You, you definitely can. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to say this respectfully, and I don't think Shaka cares about this at all if I make this point about Shaka. Uh, when I hear Shaka, Shaka singing, her style of singing, all right, you guys ready? I don't get what I would call church mother okay to me it, it doesn't sound like shaka's voice is that kind of voice that was developed in the church right um definitely out of this world god given but you can kind of tell that church sound And I don't know about Shaka's career as far as how it started. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know if it was just that, oh, she can sing and she wanted to sing in bands and she knocked around in different bands. I find that out. After all, I am now covering Shaka Cud. So I find that out. But what I'm getting from, let's say, for instance, from an Aretha Franklin, what I'm getting from a Patti LaBelle, those divas, uh, let's just say, uh, we can even say Whitney Houston. We can say Dionne Warwick. All of the divas, and we don't even include Dionne Warwick in the high echelons of R&B divas. But when I'm thinking about this, I'm saying to myself, <sighs> the divas that we mentioned, that David mentioned, Aretha Franklin, you would have to think, and I'm sorry, y'all, I'm trying to think, and my mind goes really, really fast, so just excuse me while I have my eyes closed, I'm trying to think. With Aretha Franklin, she grows up in the church, and she's already associated with a group of people who are in the church, you know, like there is that camaraderie already there, so she's known in the gospel community. So she's already developing that fan base, right? So to me, what I hear David is probably saying and what I would probably assume myself when I mention these other uh, divas when we don't put Shaka Khan in it, I think that we don't put Shaka Khan in it because Shaka Khan did not come with that, what's the word, pedigree. Shaka Khan didn't come with that pedigree. Aretha Franklin did. And so quite naturally, everybody wants to put Aretha Franklin. And now Aretha Franklin fans are going to go like, what did he just say? But just follow with me, y'all, because we're having a discussion here. We're talking about this. We're not always going to agree with things, but we can kind of, you know, have this dialogue because I like to have a dialogue. But I think we could kind of agree that with Shock, I mean, with uh, Aretha Franklin, she has that. And so while she does not, Aretha Franklin does not probably have all of the hits in the beginning of her career as her career is struggling, but she still has that fan base. She has that following. We, we People know that she's talented. Uh, it, it's a sound that's reared, uh, uh, that, that is honed uh, in the church. You see? So she takes that and she takes it into, let's say, secular secular music and so now the gospel community who loves her so much she's bringing some of them in with her so quite naturally everybody's like oh aretha franklin we love aretha we love aretha we love this sound like isn't she fantastic so some of it you have to think about is promotion right promotion and marketing is just what it is okay okay 
So I think the same thing when we think of Patti LaBelle, that she's getting that following. She, she's trying to find her way. But I want you to understand when I think about Patti LaBelle in my head right now, I'm going somewhere with uh, Rita Franklin. But in my head with Patti LaBelle, Patti LaBelle wasn't, to me, I wasn't there, <laughs> but to me, I don't think Patti LaBelle was a showstopper until the late 19, excuse me, until the early 1980s. What we love so much about Patti LaBelle is we love the fact that she brings all of this talent to the stage. I mean, one thing I'm going to always say about Patti LaBelle, Petra LaBelle is going to walk up out of here, you guys, and she's going to be one of those divas who I would say, baby, she left it. She she left it. You know what I'm saying? Like she she wore her gift out, but she didn't wear her gift out in like a bad way. She wore it out in a good way. When she left, she was like, baby, I ate it up. I left it. I, 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 I. I, I'm here to tell you, I, I, I took my gift and I turned it upside down. I turned it inside out. You know, I, I, I you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I see Petra LaBelle. She's, to me, she leaves it all on the stage. Like, baby, I'm done. I done gave it to you. I, it's over with. And so to me, that's why we think so highly of Petra LaBelle. We think highly of Patti LaBelle because, again, it's that marketing to me that Patti LaBelle was able to do. And that is, hey, with LaBelle, you know, they had to get the attention with the, um, oh, what you want to call it, with the uh, outrageous outfits and so on and so forth. So they was trying to get attention as much as possible. Same thing with Patti LaBelle. Hey, I got to get your attention. If I got to take off a lash, if I have to kick off a shoe, if I got to roll around on the floor or whatever the case may be, I'm going to give you a good quality show. And I think that that's the reason why we like Patti LaBelle so much. She just gives us a good quality show. Again, it's marketing, it's promotion. You know, with Patti LaBelle, I can say the same thing that David Nathan said about um, Shaka Khan. And that is, I don't know of any Shaka, Patti LaBelle's records, maybe a couple in my head right now. And that would be probably Winner in You, the Winner in You album, Timeless Journey album, and maybe another album here or there that I would say is even. All the rest of to me, uh, all the rest of them to me are also uneven. The same thing with Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin has some uh, uneven albums too. But I think I know where David Nathan was going when he was thinking about Shaka Khan, though the unevenness of her albums. But anyway, moving right along because I don't want to change my thought because I was in a good thought there. So that's what you get with Patti LaBelle. The same thing with Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston is out of this world incredible vocally. But at the same time, you have to think about marketing, marketing with uh, Whitney Houston. And look at all the things that she was able to accomplish with that good marketing that Clive Davis was able to do so well, in fact, that he even alienated intentionally or unintentionally all of the people, uh, her urban artists, audience, if you will. Right. But remember what I said in the last video when it came to Shaka Khan. When it came to Shaka Khan in my last video, I made the comment. I said, baby, there's just no way. There is no way you're going to tell me that when the record exec heard the Shaka Khan album, I'm pretty sure somebody somewhere pulled her coattail. That's just me. You know, that's just how I feel. You know, and, and, and I, I, y'all making me tired, so I have to go. <laughs> Allegedly. Think about it. Because the business is the business, right? You know, there are some people who are like, wait a minute, uh-uh, we can't have her competing with this one if this one is already on our record label, so on and so forth. And in my head, I'm also thinking about, wait a minute, uh, Shaka Khan, she's still with Rufus. For whatever reason, the reason why she decided to create a solo uh, album, I don't know. So I have to ask her, what was the reason for her going solo? And it might just come up in this book. But here you have Shaka Khan, you know, obviously going solo in the middle of a contract that she's already signed to with Rufus, right? And with me listening to this album, I'm saying to myself, like, this album could not have been promoted properly. The Shaka album, it's just no way. It's no way that the album was <laughs> promoted properly to the point where I'm going to assume the album must have gone gold because I think she only has one platinum album in her um uh, um, catalog, and that's I think it's I feel for you album, right? So I think somebody somewhere pulled a coattail, and what I mean by pull a coattail, 
we don't want to get caught up in this because in my head, I'm saying to myself, like, if that album Shaka would have really and truly hit, she would have ditched Rufus right then and there and would have been like, I am so done with Rufus. Like, do whatever you want to do. I don't even care. Like, I'm going to go here to diva, diva them. You understand? <laughs> because if you think about it right now, she's not there. She's not there. When you think about it, I mean, she's a great lead singer in a band. She has her own sound. Rufy has its own sound. It's a great band, so on and so forth, with some great music. But now we're going to put her center stage. You think I'm wrong, okay? Well, here's two instances where I can back up what I'm saying, because other R&B divas have said it before. If you look back at one of my Lisa Fisher videos and you go listen to Lisa Fisher, Lisa Fisher say the same thing. And Lisa Fisher said this. She said uh, when she released her debut album, uh, So Intense, right? Number one record. Um, I think she got another top 10 hit as well with the song Save Me. That's neither here nor there. You would think that the record companies would just automatically assume like, let's do the how can I ease the pain route? This is, we, we, we can, we can. We got a hit with Save Me. We have a hit with I. How Can I Ease the Pain? So let's create an album that's even with these two sounds. The up-tempo stuff and the ballads. Kind of like mm, Whitney Houston's albums, if you think about it. Lisa Fisher, Lisa Fisher says, the record company's like, we don't know what to do with you. What? That's what the record company, she said, said. We don't know what to do with you. Okay. Then think about the Rochelle Pharrell video that I did when it was like, Rochelle, you sound great and wonderful, but we have a, our, our roster of R&B divas, we already have enough. So you have to think that in Shaka Khan's case, they have to say, no, nah, we got probably too many R&B divas out like right now. Who are the R&B divas on Warner Brothers? Like, you know, you just have to sometimes think that way because I just don't think that Shaka Khan is being promoted like that. I really don't. To me, if you think about it, in my head, even though uh, Shaka Khan has all of these solo albums out, uh, going from uh, her solo work back to Rufus, in my head, now that I'm thinking about it, I still look at Shaka Khan as being a part of Rufus, even during that time. The only time I think about Shaka Khan being a breakout artist, a breakout R&B diva, is when she releases the album um, I Feel For You, which coincidentally becomes her biggest album of her career and it was when she was finished with her contracts with uh, Rufus. That's all I'm going to say. Do you understand where I'm going? So while I agree with Nathan, I mean, oh gosh, I just, I am so intrigued about what I'm going to get, what he's going to say about all the other Divas on here. So let me read this last part and then I'll be done. My perception of Shaka Khan in her place in the annuals of contemporary music changed one night around 1993 or 94 when I saw her at the Strand nightclub just outside Los Angeles. I had a great seat right up front, and when Shaka hit the stage, Mic in hand, she started singing at the top of her more than extensive vocal range with such ease that I had to suppress a gasp. I couldn't ever remember hearing any other singer start a song there so effortlessly. I called every one of the many diehard Shaka fans I know and confessed that I finally understood why they considered her the true queen of soul, R&B, jazz, and whatever music form she might be turning her hand on to any given day. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's, it's all about marketing. It's all about marketing. It is. I, I think I would agree with him about the age, but then again, I'm not quite sure about the age, but that does make sense though, in the case of David, what he's saying about Shaka Khan's age, but you also have to think about Whitney Houston in her age at the time. How does she get up there to the high echelons? It's marketing. It's promotion at the end of the day. I mean, you can have a great talent, you know, great singing ability, but if it's not marketing and if it's not promoted, you don't have... Hmm. 
Yeah. So that would be, I would have a couple of questions as I'm ending this video that I would probably want to ask Shaka. I would say, first of all, how was it going into the recording studio to do your work and then to do the other albums that you did for Rufus? Because Shaka Khan definitely was busy from when did she record her first album? Was it 1978, 79, when she recorded the Shaka album? And then she goes from there and back and forth from Shaka to Rufus, from Shaka to Rufus, from Shaka to Rufus. And then sometimes skipping Rufus altogether. Like, what was that like? Really? And I, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to read some more of this book. I just had to stop. And, 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 oh, wow. I just had to stop when I started reading saying, David is definitely hitting the head on the nail with the Shaka Khan and the way I'm feeling about her as well, you know. So I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. But the, the same way I feel about Shaka Khan now, the only other diva I felt about this way before Shaka Khan, I'm only feeling this way about Shaka Khan now, it would be Dionne Warwick. And Dionne Warwick is such a great singer to me. And then when her catalog, when you hear her catalog and the people who have covered her music and you go like, yeah, that's Dion Warwick's song. You know, it's almost like, man, how, 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 how did she slip through the crack? I have a theory. But anyway, we'll talk about that. Well, I guess whenever I get around to really talking about Dion Warwick. But right now I am stuck on Shaka Khan. I've been listening to her Shaka album uh, the entire week. I cannot take my hand off some love in life is a dance. Like I'm stuck right there on those two songs. Like I've heard the whole album, but those two songs I'm here to tell you, I just love. And I was the one who would play I'm every woman like all the time. Now it's like I'm, I'm every woman. Okay. That's nice. But I got to listen to some love, you know, but anyway, on that note, <laughs> If you have made it this far in the commentary, then I think it's only appropriate for me to say, hey, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hang out with me as I talk about R&B divas. And every now and then, you know what? I dish out the dirt on who dropped kick two in these entertainment streets as well. <laughs> but right now we're talking about R&B divas over here. And whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always says to me, she says, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. I love you guys out there. I hope you feel the love. I thank you guys so much for your support and for you guys subscribing and watching. I, I can't thank you enough. I thank you so much. And also, don't forget to put you behind where your heart desires to be. All right? I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next video. And until then, you know what to do, baby. All right. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>